Okay. So, um, you know, suppose I give you a loaf of bread and I say, tell me the volume of this loaf of bread, right? The bread, you know, uh, I, can't, I can't draw. Um, give this loaf of bread, tell me the I tell you to find the volume of the loaf of bread. How would you how would you find the volume? You would what? Length times width times height. Length times width times height. If it's a box. <laughs> okay, so if my if my loaf of bread just looks like this, <laughs> that'll work. That'll work for sure. Right? Um, okay, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Length times width times height, right? So um, <coughs> like times with times, right? I definitely were. Okay, but uh, you've got this loaf of bread, and I want some answer as to what the what the volume is. How would you how would you do it? Suppose you're in elementary school, you know that you know, should be something like like times with times height, right? If I have a, if I have a, you know, some object and it has a has a height to it, right? if I have this area times the times the height, then I can get the volume, right? The area times the height is the volume. <coughs> The area of the top times the height is the volume, right? So, but you've got this loaf of bread, and it's kind of irregular. So, uh, you know, maybe, <coughs> I don't know, maybe if you're if you're a kid, what you think is that well, the trouble is that the the, the area, I can I can I could um, I can I can figure out the length of it pretty easily just by measuring it, right? But the trouble is that the area that I'm multiplying multiplying by changes all the time. Right. And so you think, okay, well, I'm just going to, to find the volume, I'm going to take slices. I'm going to slice my bread in, say, one centimeter slices. Right. Slice my bread in one centimeter slices. Right. And then I'm going to take each, each bread and, like, just measure the area by putting on some graph paper, or chasing it out, and just counting the squares. Right. I figure out the area of, I figure out the area <coughs> of the, the top of each, each piece of bread. I multiply by that one centimeter, and I add all these things together, and that gives me some approximation of the volume, right? But the trouble is, of course, that the um, that the bread, that the area changes, right? Even between here and that one centimeter past, the area is it's not you know it's not fixed, right? The area is changing, and so it'd be better actually to you know cut it in in half centimeter, half centimeter slices. And that would give you a more better. That would give you a better approximation. You cut it in, but again, it's not the it's not the best. But you would take, you know, and then you cut into smaller smaller slices. Take all the areas, multiply by the multiply by the widths that you cut them into, add them all together, and that gives you some approximation of the volume, right? And so you see, what you're doing is you're getting a you're getting a Riemann sum, right? You're taking the area. So what you do is you. Um, you say a b or let's say zero l uh, for the length, and you've chopped it up into first one centimeter slices x n, right? And you say, okay, I'm going to multiply. Um, I'm going to take the area at the at x x naught, and I'm going to multiply by the the change in by the change in uh, the chain by the by the thickness, right, right, <coughs> which is at initially one centimeter, right, and then you add on a at x one times that, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, a at x n minus one times that, right, and that'll be, you know, you add all those things together and that gives you approximation, right, and you keep on doing that, um, you take finer and finer partitions, and you say, oh, you're getting something like this, right, a x i delta x i from 1 to uh, I'm sorry i from 0 to n minus 1 to say um, maybe I'll take it from 1 to 1 to n just to make it cleaner right so this is an approximation of the area and approximation of, of volume excuse me right and then you let n, n go to infinity right so then let n go to infinity, right? And you see what <coughs> see what you get. You know this thing that you you did you got from you know, trying to approximate your bread turns into the integral of of a of x dx between zero and l. 
right? Okay, and maybe I should use A and B just to make it more relevant. Okay, so for example, um, if my loaf of bread looked like this, right? If I had a cylindrical, cylindrical loaf of bread from the same bakery <laughs> as, as the other loaf of bread, um, I'd say, okay, well, um, from zero to 10, its length is the same. You'd say, okay, well, I want um, the area at, at x, the area at, at point x, right, um, times dx, right, and let's say that the, the, the radius is three, Right. So you would just get, of course, you know, pi r squared, pi r squared dx between 0 and 10, right? In other words, 9 pi times times 10, right? Just the just the area times the times the times the length. Right? The area of the slice times the length. Right, which is what, what it should be, of course. Um, and suppose you had um, something like this, you know, from the same mathematical bakery, um, you had something like this. It's again length of 10, but the, but the, um, the, <coughs> the radius here, is like, you have basically some sort of conical, you know, conical piece of bread. You know, with, its, with the cone, the tip of the cone chopped off. The radius at the top is three, the radius at the bottom is, is five, right? And so, you know, you need to figure out the formula for the area at point x, and then integrate that thing between zero and 10. Okay, so take, take one minute and work it out. Okay, turn to somebody nearby and tell them what you got. So you need to figure out the area at at point X. What's the area at point X? Or what is the what is the radius at point X? So. Those of you who have been through elementary school or junior <coughs> high school, right. you've got this line. The radius is increasing linearly, right? Are you too shy to say? Somebody say it, please. I'm going to go walk around that side. Uh, yes? Is 3 plus delta x to the i. Um, so 
what is the area at, at time? What is the radius at, at point oh, five? So the area is equal to pi r squared. Yes. So, so what's r? That will be what's r? Uh, pi. Or sorry, it'll be uh, three plus delta x to delta x five. What is the radius here is three. The radius here is five. What's the radius in the middle? Four. Four. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. The radius is increasing linearly. Right. It's a line. Right. What's the rate of increase? Well, in ten units, it is increased by two. Right. The slope of this line is two. <laughs> the slope of this line. <laughs> the slope, it's increased by two in ten units of time. The slope of this line is one fifth. Okay. Right. The slope of this line is one fifth. So the radius is three plus one fifth uh, from here, from zero. So the change in x being just x. Okay. <laughs> You guys <laughs> all got into college. <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna okay. Yeah, no, okay, that's all right. That's all right. Just uh, just a slip of the mind, I guess. Uh, okay, so that's that's the radius, right? The radius of time x, three plus a fifth x, right? And so the area is gonna be like pi radius squared. Radius squared, um, right? And so to get the get the volume, I need to <coughs> integrate that guy dx between zero and ten. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm I'm just going to assume that many of you knew that already. Many of you knew it and just didn't want to see it. <coughs> okay, make make sense, right? And then I'm not going to integrate this. I assume that you can you can integrate it. Okay, um, okay. So let me give put up a, a trickier one. Uh, so so this one, I'd like you to find out the area of the following piece of a cylinder. So you start off with a cylinder of radius three. Start up with a cylinder of radius three. Start up with a cylinder of radius three. You know, if you want, it's convenient to center it at the origin here. Okay, and then I want you to cut it in half. Okay, cut it in half. So you're only going to take um, you're only going to take half of it. Right. You're only going to take the right half of it. the right half of it. And then I'd like you to slice it uh, at a pi over 4 angle. Okay, so start from the origin. Start from, start from this uh, y-axis. Start from the y-axis. And then slice upwards at a pi over 4 angle. So you get this wedge, right? You get this piece. It looks you know, something like, like this. But the angle here is pi over 4. You get this piece of the piece of the cylinder. Right? Just imagine you've got a cylinder, you've chopped it in half, and then you've sliced it down to the down to the down to the edge here. Right? And I'd like you to to tell me. Um, so <coughs> here's your x, right? If we slice it like this, if we slice it like this, what do the pieces look like? What are the what does it cut off look like? You guys see what it looks like? What does it look like? If I cut it like this, <coughs> right, it's going to drop straight down because it was part of a cylinder, right? So you see what it is? It's rectangles, right? If you slice it, um, if you slice it perpendicular to x, you get these rectangles. Okay. So figure out the area at each x. Right? X is the X is the distance to the to the edge here. Okay. So 
So you need to figure out the height, and you need to figure out the uh, the depth. So again, start off with a cylinder, cut it in half. Right, cylinder, cut in half, and then you slice it, slice it at a forty-five degree angle. Right, so you get this this you know, chunk of the cylinder. Okay, talk with somebody nearby, please. Okay, so um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, um, okay, so uh, who who has an idea of, of what to do? I'm all this. Okay, so I only know how to find the height. Okay, not the, the height. Yeah. Okay, um, but I figured out that if you get a rectangle when you cut this way, mm -hmm. if you cut perpendicular to that, you get triangle, like if you cut. If you cut this way, yeah, okay, if you yeah, cut yeah, the other way, yeah, you yeah. get a triangle, sure. which allows you to find the height using sure. trigonometric functions. Sure. Sure. Um, so since we know the angle and we know x is the bottom, right. you can use 
the tangent of the angle divided by x equals the height. That's true. So the tangent of pi over 4 is uh, the height over x, right? You know, but tangent, remember, type tangent pi over 4 is just 1, right? Mm -hmm. So the height actually is x. Oh, because it's 45 degrees. It's 45 degrees. <laughs> okay, good. Good. So the height, you know the height of it, um, right? You know that each of these slices has height x, right? We've sliced it at point, at point x, right? And then what is, um, oops, this is x, right? And, uh, Right. What's the width? Or what's the what's this length here? Anyone get it? Look at it from the top, right? If you look at it from the top, right? Just now we were looking at it from the side, right? We saw that we got this triangle, right? If you look at it from the top, right, it's a circle, right? right? It's a circle. What's the formula for the circle? Well, it's radius three. Right. So, so. So y is equal to the square root of 9 minus x squared. This is your y. Right. Because x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. OK. So we've sliced it. We've sliced it like this, right? And we know it's, it's x tall. And we know the, the height of it, too, right? If this is, if this is x then the height is going to be twice twice that, right? Two times the square root of nine minus x squared. Right? Because this point is square root of nine minus x squared, and this point is negative square root of nine minus x squared. So the length of this the length of this line is this plus this, this minus this. Right? Okay. So right, so you get that the area is x times 2 square roots of 9 minus x squared. <coughs> okay. Right? And so what's the formula for the volume? Well, you're going to integrate between what and what? 0 and 3, right? x goes from 0 to 3. Uh, the area, you integrate the area, it gets dx, right? And that's an easy one. You can use um, u substitution if you want. OK. okay. So uh, this is probably the hardest type of problem along these lines that, that you'll see in, in the homework. You know, it's just, you know, you know can, you, can you figure things out? There's, they'll give you some geometric co construction and say, what's the area, of, what's the volume of this thing? And then you have to think a little bit and figure it out. Everyone, everyone all right? I I'm, seem to be breaking a lot of teaching rules in this class that I normally set for myself. Like normally I, I try not to give any reaction when students you know, say something you know, really bizarre. They're like, hmm, that's an interesting answer. Does anybody else have another idea? <laughs> but I, I just completely lost my poker face. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, uh, I ran a Taiwanese language table in Oldenburg, and a student from Taiwan uh, said, oh, where are you from? And I said, oh, my family's from Banqiao. And, and another person said that she is from Kaohsiung. And the, the girl from Taiwan said, oh, those are really close to each other. And you can almost not find two cities that are farther apart <laughs> in Taiwan. And so I went like, <laughs> like this. <coughs> but anyway, I, I try, in general, I try not to give any, any reaction at all. At all as, uh, yeah. Um, Okay. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So, um, 
So this is the basic idea, right? You take slices. Um, and so there's a whole class of problems that people do by, by slices. And the, people, the reason people do them is because they're easy to, easy to figure out. <coughs> they're, they're sort of nice. You have these problems, and you can figure them out using slices. And the, the class of problems is, is called solids of, re solids of revolution. Solids of revolution. Um, oh, actually, before we before we do that, let me let me uh, set up a different problem. This is actually not not a solid of revolution problem, but a problem from the previous class. Okay, so um, here's the here's the last last one. Um, you have a solid between x equals minus one and x equals plus one, um, uh, and Cross sections, cross sections of the object perpendicular taken perpendicularly um, to the x-axis um, are disks. Uh, Okay, um, so with diameters from y equals x squared to y equals 2 minus x squared. Okay, so let me draw the picture. I think the description is maybe not that good. But we've got, we've got this object. We've got one parabola here y equals x squared. We've got another parabola, 2 minus x squared. OK. And then what you do is you have this object. And I guess this actually is um, an object of revolution. I, I should have kept it for the Anyway, cool, let's do it. OK. So you have this object, and you get it by um, uh, Taking these things and then and then spinning them around. Okay, so at, at each slice, at for each slice, you get a circle. Okay, the circle changes changes size, right? Like this. Okay, so right, um, you have this one parabola, you have this other parabola, right? And then you take take this line and you spin it around and you get a circle. And at every, for every line here, you take this, you spin it around, you get the circle. Okay, so, um, so tell me what the area um, this is going between x equals negative one and x is positive one. Okay, so what is the what is the volume of this object? Think about it for one minute, please. Just set up set up the integral. You don't have to do it. Just set it up this. Yes. 
Okay, turn to somebody nearby. Tell them this is this is a what's a of x. Who would like to say? Who would like to say? Yeah. Shai, how about you? You, you I think you, <coughs> you know it. Uh, so, a. so what's a? A of x is, a of a x is equal to two minus x squared mm -hmm. minus x squared. Mm -hmm. so oh, sorry, the integral from. Um, uh, it was yeah. between uh, negative one and one. Yeah. So that's the that is is that is that it for for a the very for the area? Remember, a is a is the area of the slice, right? And our slice is a disc. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, okay. pi a pi to the two minus x squared uh, pi times that uh, radius squared. Almost. So the radius is divided by two. Divided by two. Great. Okay. <laughs> right. So pi pi r squared, right? Right. The you see that the um, right the uh, the diameter the diameter of the disk is the upper function minus the lower function, right? So that's two minus x squared minus x squared, right? Two minus x squared minus x squared. That's that's the diameter, so you take half of that, right? So you get two minus two x squared over over two, quantity squared times pi, that's the area, right? And then you integrate that thing between negative one and one. And you can see the form. Any any questions? Everybody okay? Questions? Questions? Okay. So this is an example of um, uh, so-called solids of solids of revolution, where typically you start off with something and then you rotate it around an axis, and then they ask you to find the volume of the resulting solid. Okay, so um, so uh, just best ways to see some examples. Um, so somebody starts off. I take y equals the square root of cosine x between um, zero x between zero and, and pi over two. Um, take the lines y equals zero and x equals zero. So you, you take the um, the planar object between these three things, okay? Take the planar object between these three graphs. So uh, you have y equals square root of cosine x, right? Um, between zero and pi over two. You have y equals zero, and you have x equals zero, right? And that gives you this, this, this planar object, okay? And then they'll say, you know, rotate this thing around some axis. In this case, they'll say, um, the problem is to rotate uh, around the x-axis. Okay. So you get you know this this nose nose cone thing. <laughs> okay. okay. Right. And then the question is what is the what's the volume? And it's easy, right? Because you just need to <coughs> integrate the area, but the slices are all circles. So you just need to find the radius, but you know the radius, right? So it's just pi r squared, right? It's just going to be pi radius squared dx between 0 and pi over 2. 
right? But the radius you see is, is cosine root cosine x, um, where r of x is root cosine x. So it's even easier. Um, right, you get pi cosine x dx between, between 0 and pi over 2. So, um, right, uh, maybe more interesting, slightly more interesting. You get this sort of problem. They'll say, um, uh, <coughs> um, you have y equals x squared, and you have y equals 2x. Um, y equals x squared, and y equals 2x. Y equals 2x. In the f and they'll say, you know, look at the intersection in the first quadrant. Look at the, the object, you know, Cut off by this thing, cut off by these two curves in the first quadrant, um, right? So, in the first quadrant, and they say rotate um, this thing around the y-axis. Okay. So, take this thing and you rotate around the y-axis. see what you get, you get this um, parabolic, again, nose cone thing, but with a cone pull, pulled out of it. Okay. So this cone, uh, parabolic cone, minus the right cone, the uh, linear cone here. Okay. So, again, you have to, s you have to find, the, find the volume, what's the volume? Why don't you try it? Take take a minute and see if you can do it. See what you get, or, or at least just set up the integrals. So this would be a d. Uh, you'd be integrating uh, against dy for this example. Okay, turn to somebody nearby and talk to them, please.
Okay, who would like to talk about it? <laughs> who would like to talk about it? So, um, right. Um, Molly, how about you? You sound like you know what you're doing. Um, so since we're integrating with respect to Y mm -hmm. rather than X, you have to switch everything to X equals. Okay, so, um, so, yep. uh -huh. so I got the radius of the outside would be square root of y. Uh -huh. So since everything circles, it would be pi times the square root of y squared, okay. which is okay. just y. Okay, so pi, uh, pi y. square root of y squared. Yeah. I'm going to just write it out. Uh -huh. um, and then you could set it up with the other integral and the same integral, I think, but I separated them. Okay, so, so you, you said, let's, let's go between uh, 0 and 4. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the volume of the, of the parabolic of the nose code, mm -hmm. right? And then and just pull minus out. Minus the integral of the second one, which would be pi of uh, y over 2 squared. Mm -hmm. Right. You want. OK. So right, you take the outside guy and you subtract off the inside guy, right? So that's, that's you know, you're basically doing it in two parts. You say, well, the first time, whenever I slice it, right, I slice it, I slice it at height y, my radius is actually um, uh, square root of square root of y, right? Because my radius is the x value, right? My radius is the x value, and x is the square root of y, right? The second time, <coughs> right, it's, it's simpler than that. I slice it at height y, and you know this is uh, my my x value is of course y over two. Right? So you have this guy. You have this slice, and your, um, you know, that's that's your area, right? So this is the area, area, the first area, and this is the second area, right? Okay. So you take you take the integral of that area, and then subtract off the integral of that area. Okay. So that's that's fine. Um, another way that people do it um, is basically exactly the same, um, <laughs> but you just put them together, and you say, um, I'm. I, when I slice it, when I slice it, I get this uh, annulus, right? I get this annulus, right? You know, a, a, a circle with a circle with a circle removed, right? From the top, actually it looks like a circle, right? A circle with a circle removed, right? And I know that the <coughs> um, the radius of this guy is the square root of y. I know that the radius of this guy is y over 2, right? And so the area of the annulus, area of the annulus is just going to be pi, um, you know, pi outer area, outer radius squared um, minus pi inner radius squared. In other words, pi times the difference of the radii squared. Right? And then you just integrate that thing. But this is, you see it's exactly the same method. Right? You just integrate the area of the annulus. But that's exactly the same thing as taking the difference between the areas of the, of the two circles. Right? Okay. People, give this, people give this method a name. Um, they call it the method of washers. The method of washers, but it, I would say it doesn't really merit its own name. It's just, you know, it's just, <laughs> you know, just doing this thing twice, right? It's just taking this one and then subtracting off the other one. Okay, so it's just again slices, just a difference of slices. Okay. Um, 
So, you know, whether you do it this way or that way, I don't really care because they're the same way. <laughs> right? They're exactly the same way. Right? So, okay. So, I guess let's stop. Uh, so, next, next time we'll do a, a slightly different method, which is kind of cool, um, which is called the method of shells.